Hi, in this video I'll be discussing about various laws for locating root canal orifices. So Krasner and Rankov, two scientists, Krasner and Rankov. They have done extensive studies in this part of literature. They have studied around fan at pulp chambers and they proved that cemento enamel junction CEJ is the most important landmark for locating either your pulp chamber or your root canal orifices. And they also explained in detail that there is a specific pattern in arrangement of pulp chamber walls and floor and they have given few laws in order to assist clinicians to identify pulp chambers and also to identify root canal orifices. So these laws are especially useful for locating calcified canals. So now let's see what are all the laws given by Krasner and Ranko. Starting with the first law, law of symmetry 1. So according to this first law, law of symmetry 1, if this is the pulp chamber, this is the buccal aspect, lingual, mesial and distal. If we draw a line in the center of a tooth at the level of CEJ, extending mesodistally, then canals, except in case of maxillary first molar, in all other tooth or teeth, canals are located equidistant from this mesodistal line. So, law of symmetry 1 states that canals are equidistant from a line extending mesodistally. So, that is law of symmetry 1. And we have law of symmetry 2. So, according to this law of symmetry 2, when we draw a line which is perpendicular to the mesodistal line, the canal orifices are located along this perpendicular line. So, according to law of symmetry 2, canals are located on a line which is perpendicular to the mesodistal line which is drawn in the center of the tooth. And then we have another law, law of color change. So this law states that the floor of a pulp chamber is always darker than the walls. So we have something called as dentinal map. We have canal orifices, root developmental fusion lines, etc. on the floor. And the floor is always darker than the walls of the pulp chamber. So that's another indication or another law for identifying your orifices. And coming to the next law, law of orifice location 1 so law of orifice location 1 states that if suppose we are in a room assume this room as a pulp chamber and we have various walls four walls a roof and a floor so according to this first law orifices are usually located along the line angles in other words they are located at the junction of the wall and the floor so usually at those junctions of wall and floor we find the root canal orifices and according to other law that is law of orifice location 2 so this tries to give us in specific the location of orifice so within the same room or within the same pulp chamber these orifices are located at angles of the junction of the wall and floor that is at the point angles so in a pulp chamber we have a wall a buccal wall and a floor so these orifices are located at the junction of the wall and floor and along that junction they are present at the angles or at the corners so that is law of orifice location 2 and then we have law of orifice location 3 which states that these canal orifices are present usually at the terminus of root developmental fusion lines. So we have many root developmental fusion lines evident on the floor and at the terminus of these developmental fusion lines we find orifices. And apart from these laws we have other laws such as 
law of centrality and law of concentricity so law of centrality and law of concentricity so according to law of centrality pulp chambers are usually present in the center of a tooth at the level of cej please remember all these laws when we are discussing cemento enamel junction is considered to be the standard anatomic landmark okay we are talking all these laws with respect to cej at the level of cej right okay so even this cross sectional diagram is at the level of cej okay that's important so according to law of centrality the pulp chamber is present within the center of a tooth at the level of cej so this law basically guides us how to start and where to start an access cavity for example if we have a prosthetic crown or if we have uh, prominent cuspal areas on the crown then where do we please place your initial access cavity burr so we need to identify cej and we should place the access cavity burr or we should start access cavity at the center of the cej so that's how law of centrality helps us clinically so coming to law of concentricity so according to this law the walls of the pulp chamber as i said assume this room as a pulpal chamber so the walls of the pulpal chamber are concentric to the external outline of the tooth at the level of cej this is very important I'll, i would like to repeat this again so according to concentricity the walls of the pulp chamber are concentric to the external outline of the tooth at the level of cej so this is all in relation to cej an important anatomical landmark so how does this law help us clinically for example there is a bulge on tooth structure at the level of cej in buccal aspect of a tooth then it gives us a clue that the pulp chamber also extends into this bulge buccally or for for suppose if a tooth is narrow mesiodistal in case of premolar if it is narrow or mesiodistally compared to the buccolingual width of your tooth then it is understood that the pulp chamber is also narrower mesiodistally so i'll post some diagrams simultaneously so that you'll have a better understanding of the topic so as per the law of centrality if we have a, a tooth cross section at the level of cej in this fashion the pulp chamber will be present more or less at the center so this is at the level of cej right so according to law of centrality if this is pulp chamber and this is cej and this is a cross section of a tooth cs then in this scenario pulp chamber is present in the center at the level of cej right and according to law of concentricity the same pulp chamber the walls of pulp chamber are concentric to the external contour of the tooth at the level of cej so to summarize krasner and ranko have done extensive studies in this area of literature they have studied around finite pulp chambers and they identified cej as the most important landmark and there is also a specific pattern in arrangement of the pulp chamber walls as well as the floor so they have given numerous laws in order to assist clinicians to identify these root canal orifices right so they have given several laws and these laws are instrumental and very much useful especially when we come across calcified canals so we have different laws law of symmetry 1 law of symmetry 2 law of color change orifice location 1 2 3 and law of centrality and law of concentricity so this is in brief about various laws given by krasner and ranko to identify root canal orifices